uh, we have returned with a sizable amount of things, and we shall use those things to establish ourselves. All right, first things first. The Clay Men. We picked up six of them. They are all bound for London. They're worth 20 echoes apiece. And there we go. About time. Here's our payment. So 120 echoes. Next, we have already unlocked the university. So going to the university is fantastic. Oh, it apparently costs me a secret to go there. So that's fairly important to note that you need at least one secret available. This is another one of those reasons why you really want to uh, stash a secret. Oh, it apparently costs wow. me a secret to go there. There we go. <laughs> Gotta mute that event. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, park it here. Okay, so, and it looks like I have access to the Whisper Lock box. This is a sunless, this is a Fallen London, um, original. If you play Fallen London, you can actually get access to this Whisper Locked box. Your character in Fallen London will deliver it to a sea captain. Um, it is something that uh, no one is necessarily sure of. Uh, so it goes into your inventory and you can use it. Um, and I can ask the scholar about it, so I will. Uh, he doesn't really know... wait, no, okay. I can sell in the box for 100 echoes, which, uh, I mean, that is 100 echoes, but I think instead I will ask for his advice, and he will tell me that I can look in Irem. Irem is t far to the northeast, but it's nice to have a quest, so that might be something that we will very seriously consider. Irem is the northeast corner, uh, area. I lodgings. I can read the morning papers. Certainly no reason not to do that. Resting in a room above the blind helmsman costs me ten echoes, but reduces terror, heals wounds, and gives me one restful night. Uh, I don't necessarily need to do that yet. We will see. Ten echoes is certainly not that expensive. So that's that's certainly something to think about. Okay. Uh, carousing on the wolf's deck docks, however, is also ten echoes, and uh, has a pretty good chance of uh, reaping some interesting benefits. Oh, first things first, let's look at the new recruits. New recruits almost always include people who are uh, in some way involved with you, like first officers. Uh, you can find these people on islands naturally, but uh, it's perfectly fine to just get them here. And uh, the Sickle Riven Navigator is a first officer, which is something we desperately need. And uh, the headaches only stop when he stops working, so let's go ahead and pull him on. Okay, so that's good. Uh, it's really good to have a first officer. Let's equip him right now so we don't forget. And now we're starting to look pretty respectable. 25, 27, 32, 39, and 66 veils. Beautiful. A lot of the officers that I really like raise your veils a lot, and having a really high stat in veils is something that I'm going to be pretty appreciative of as time goes on. All right, what's next? Uh, we'll carouse in the wolf stack ducks, an 80% chance of success. I was unlucky. I lost 10 echoes, I lost 3 terror, I got uh, recent news, and I lost my free evening. Eh, my terror is about 12 though, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. What else? The Rose Market. Um, someone purchasing long boxes. Absolutely no reason to purchase long boxes. If I had live specimens, I could perhaps do something with those, but uh, notable that those are usable. Okay. Ambiguous Eloths. I have one Ambiguous Elith. I don't think they're worth an especial lot, but it might be worth trading to the Scholar at this point. Oh, one Echo. <laughs> I should not have bothered. Um, memories of Distant Shores are worth 10, so good to establish that, but we're gonna try and keep a hold of as many of those as we can. Alright. And now for the real profits. The Admiral Surety Office, Survey Office. Demo Island? Absolutely. Gatter's Morn? Heck yeah. Mount Palmerston? 40 Echoes. Sweet. Godfall? 30 Echoes. Wonderful. Vendorbite? Yep. Wither? Sweet. Cargo's at 20 out of 40. It's important to keep track because you'll have to throw fuel overboard if you're not careful. Uh, here we now have access to the Dark Spectacled Admiral. Um, we can ask him what he eats. Looks like the Mangrove College in the Swallowing Isle is our next strategic information area. Um, passing on strategic information here would be quite good. Uh, the other thing about strategic information, however, is that you can hold on to it and you can uh, combine it together to make vital intelligence, which is useful for a couple of things, but it's also worth a, quite a bit more money, I'm pretty sure. I think in this instance we want the money more than we want the uh, strategic information. 
yeah, 150 echoes. Vital information costs 300, so it's perfectly fine to sell it piecemeal uh, if we're not trying to raise supremacy in London. And uh, we're not yet. Moves in the great game. I, there's not a lot of things you can use those for, but I still want to keep them because they're pretty hard to come by. Um, okay. And I still have more port reports to submit. Quaker's Haven, not worth a lot. Uh, Khan's Heart. Ooh. 75 Echoes. Yeah, spying on Khan's Heart was definitely worth it. The Command Canal, 5. Pigmoat Isle, 10. Uh, the Isle of Cats, 30. Wonderful. The Iron Republic is 10 and a little less terror. Uh, if I do Con Shadow, I won't get fuel, but I will reduce Terra by 5, which is fantastic. Oh, I did get fuel. Okay. I lied. Um, how many more port reports do I have to submit? That's actually an interesting question. If I have more than 6, uh, this might not be worth doing. But no, I've only got 5, so let's do it. Polythreme, Visage, Frostfound, Codex, and that's it. Now, we put ourselves in a slight bit of a pickle here because we don't have enough supplies, but we've got Zoop right now, and I don't have a use for Zoop. And it sells for 70 in Fallen London, which puts me at 816. That's a pretty solid haul for uh, my first mission out. Um, I can use that to purchase a better engine if I so choose. I could make a minor upgrade, or I could start considering looking at like a really serious upgrade. The other thing that I can look at, I believe, is upgrading my lodgings. Elegant townhouses cost a thousand echoes. They're fairly, fairly relevant to pick. Um, my terror is six. I don't want to rest in a room above the blind helmsman. <sighs> okay. So 816 is pretty good, but it also doesn't actually give us a lot that we can buy here. Uh, the Avid Suppressor is kind of cool, but it's an aft equipment. It's very important to pay attention to things that are after forward because your ship is small and does not have an after forward. So if you buy an aft weapon by accident, you're just kind of messed up. Um, the Caminus Yard's Compulsion is the ultimate engine that we can pick. It's very expensive. It consumes a lot of fuel. It's uh, really quite a thing. Discouragement, uh, that's an aft weapon. Denunciation, deck weapon. Denunciation would be not terrible to get and would be a decent upgrade. However, I'm thinking about doing something different. Okay. So we've got two supplies right now. With two supplies, we haven't fed. 33 fuel. Dark Drop coffee burns are pretty expensive here, which is kind of a problem. Uh, I could do something else though, like maybe take a firkin of prisoner's honey and start propagating blemicans. Uh, that could be interesting. Um, all of these things have different options. Casks of mushroom wines are useful in various trading endeavors. Um, crates of human souls, you want one of those for the uh, wistful devilus if you are so inclined to create human souls to deviluses. <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessarily the thing that you want to do. Foxfire candles are expensive here. They're extremely handy, but it's actually easier to get them at a place called the Empire of Hands, so we're mostly going to ignore those, even though they are quite handy for getting into places and doing a lot of exploring. Um, yeah, so the question of where to spend our echoes is definitely rather interesting. I think the answer is we want to just continue to save for the moment. We want to work on upgrading our lodgings and perhaps upgrading our engines. Uh, a 500 cost engine would not be terrible. The Illyrian versus my current one, the Elderly Steeple engine, eh, it's only a small upgrade. Um, I'm not particularly interested. Hmm, the Serpentine is a Genial Magician one, which uh, I don't remember what happened to my last Genial Magician. I think I failed something and he didn't get uh, through the quest, but it would be quite, quite cool to uh, get that. Okay, anyways. Okay, so I don't think I'm trading coffee beans, but I certainly have the opportunity. I could buy 200 worth of coffee beans, sell them for a little bit more. It's not really worth it. Uh, establish me a contact, but it's not super useful. So instead, I think what I need to do is I need to sell some of my fuel.
Alright. That looks like enough. I don't want to sell too much because it's really not much of a profit that we're turning. I'm going to buy a crate of human souls and five bales of parabola linen. And we're going to get ourselves the Merciless Mediste. Um, which uh, turned out to be very pricey. But no turning back now. The other thing that we need is supplies. Shipside provider can provide. So that is three supplies and 30 fuel. Uh, I don't like that very much. But uh, we could venture down somewhere where supplies are plentiful. We could move our way over to Aestival. Um, making a beeline for Aestival sounds like a pretty good idea right now. Especially since we have ourselves a mirror catch box. Con Shadow's over there, Mount Palmerston's there. Salt lands are around here, probably. Ooh, that's an interesting question then. We don't actually know where Aestival is. We probably can't reach it in three supplies. Isle of Cats is right there, Keyman Canal. Ooh, this is actually a trickier question than I thought. I just ended up with far too much fuel and not enough of other interesting things. Okay, we're still setting course for Mount Palmerston first. So we're just going to go by way of Hunter's Keep. And uh, that should expend a fuel. We can get another supplies by stopping at Hunter's Keep with recent news. So life's okay. Um, I do have the option of increasing my speed with the F key, but that occasionally catches my ship on fire and I lose crew members. Losing crew members is very bad when you are using We Are Clay, because you can only lose three before your ship can only move at half speed, and that is terrible. It makes it easy to run out of fuel, it's kind of a slog, honestly. It's not very fun. And uh, it also puts you at the mercy of anything that wants to kill you. So be careful. Be cautious. All right. And we'll stop at Hunter's Keep. Not receiving visitors. No lunch today. However, I no longer have any recent news, but I can take a visit to Cynthia. All right. Terror, I gained a terror, I gained a supply, and I lost hunger. All of which is really good, because that puts me in four supplies, and that is more than enough supplies to actually do what I want to do, which is start exploring. We're going to start sending out the Z-Bat. Gosh. All right. All right. We're gonna get this figured out. Huh. All right. Uh, these, I think I'm more interested in the terror than the supplies, but admittedly I'm pretty low on both. So, one less terror. For a slight dent in the hull. We didn't repair it on our way out, and uh, didn't really feel the need to. Probably not going to pick any fights that are going to require us to lose more than 60 hull. Alright. So we'd kind of like to know if there's something to the east of Venderbite. And uh, we can just ignore Wither and Codex this time around, I believe. That's a pretty good way to do that. There is our something awaits you in port. Always handy. slowly up with our nippy little ship. And now we can visit that restaurant. I can recruit the cook with 300 echoes. I don't have that many, but uh, <laughs> certainly lovely to know. I can also sample the special, which uh, is a pretty good way of reducing terror. Uh, sometimes. Not always. Alright, looks like exploring Venderbite is definitely on the list. <sighs> Picnicking requires supplies and only gives me terror rest. The mirror's challenge here is extremely hard. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. Oh, lucky me, I got a cache of curiosities. With uh, several drowning pearls in it. Which, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely worth it. Okay, we're just going to make a beeline for Mount Palmerston now. 
<coughs> oh. Okay, have we explored this, Tanachuk? Okay, that's good to have. Looks like this abyss may also be unnamed. Yes, it is. Uh, we're pretty close to being full on hunger. If we can actually kill those bats that we just saw before our hunger reaches the halfway point, then we can save ourselves some supplies. Oh, well, that actually just gets us free supplies. Okay. Which is perfect anyways. We, we want to find a way to stretch our supplies as much as possible. And that was apparently a good way to do it. Alright, the Z-Bats aren't seeing much in this direction. Which is sad, but uh, not unexpected. Oh, so... where was it that... Uh, my strategic information was to lead me this time around. It was somewhere far in the south, I believe. The Mangrove College, that's right. Which is located somewhere around the Melting Isles. Perhaps in the Melting Isles. It's definitely worth a stop there. 300 e or 150 echoes is nothing to scoff at. Nor is extra supremacy for one. Okay. And we make our way slowly towards Port Palmerston. We will engage a fantastic first officer. Unfortunately, we already have one. <laughs> a keepsake. I can surrender my soul to the Devilists. Um, there are a lot of opportunities to depart with your soul. I've never seen anyone... I don't know why you would do it, but uh, apparently there's plenty of different places to do it. So. In any case, this person uh, would like a soul, and I am happy to oblige. I gained a secret for it, and uh, also that will sort of establish me with this particular set of hellish beasts. And now I have the five parabolins necessary to engage the merciless modiste. How does she do in comparison to the single ribbon down here? Six and eight iron, three veils, hearts one. That's a, that's a different question, basically, but I think the merciless modiste is better overall, so I'm happy to engage her. I'll take that port report, of course. Uh, no reason to dig among the ruins, since we would be just be wasting our supplies. Fuel, however, is cheap here. And, uh, as long as we're just, uh, moseying about, I see no reason not to buy as much of it as possible. Alright! That allows us a lot of opportunities to explore, and get a little further out than we did last time. We'll take a little look down here. And uh, I'm going to speak to my civil room navigator because mirrors are pretty important and I'm quite happy to have a bunch of them. There we go. Alright, looks like I'm actually not that far off from where I wanted to be with Frostbound. I was hoping to explore a little bit more, but uh, we're just going to make a beeline for that bottom section. But apparently we haven't actually discovered Bright. <laughs> Gotta point our lights at it. Let's see if we can actually get it to trigger. Frostbound is very large, so... That actually didn't discover it. Hmm. 
Oh, that's okay. Take tea with the squatters at the dock. It's a good way to gain extra fuel and supplies. And a port report of the bomb cross found. Lovely, nice way to stretch things out. I think that's bright. As we keep shining our light. There we go. Bright is there. money do we have at the moment? 49 echoes, okay. Spent most of it on fuel, as to be expected. We have snowstorms over here. Um, running into a snowstorm is never a good deal. It slows your ship down considerably. It makes you waste precious fuel and resources. Nuncio is to the southeast. Uh, I'm happy to visit there. Right now we know we have a course set for Irem to look at our mirror catch box. I'd like to visit the Abbot Horizon for no other reason than to visit the Abbot Horizon. But Nuncio is certainly worth visiting. Let's take a look at Nuncio. Now I can explore along the beach. A system man holding broom. Oh, surprisingly soothing, and I lose some terror. Good stuff. There's a pages challenge here, which looks like I can just try over and over again until I succeed. Okay, weird. And I can rescue a parcel that won't stop meowing. Here's a port report. And uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. You can listen in on tall tales, ask things, uh, ask by the leathers, wash ashore. And once you are fully cultivated a friendship, you can ask to borrow a uniform, which allows you to be accepted by the locals. Once that's done, you can actually work here, uh, converse with the postal rat, this place is uh, just sort of a, a land where all of the mail goes, and where all of the postmen go as well. And you can ask him for a key to the basement, over the back rooms. Uh, that apparently costs terror. Um, further solitary exploration, I believe, is pretty rough. Oh goodness, 20 terror, but I got a secret. Okay. Well, that's a substantial increase in terror, but uh, now I have the opportunity to go in through flames and also through mirrors. Mirrors is not something we're into after. <laughs> okay. You can collect material for the dead letter office and throw it into the post. I don't actually know why you do that, but eh, <laughs> it's relaxing. Okay. Anyways. We're now at Terror 30, so we'll need to find some places to relax before we move too far on. The Fink Nodal Vortex. Somewhere far to the north is the Abbot Horizon. And we would like to seek that at some point. Sea of Lilies to the east. 
Uh, that gets us access to a place called Wisdom. Which I don't believe has anything valuable for us today, but it's worth looking at anyways. Is uncovered. A uh, chapel of lights to the northeast. Somewhere in this Sea of Lilies is a place called Wisdom, but I'm not seeing it here. I think perhaps it's further south. No! No, it's actually over there. Okay. The Sea of Lilies is quite a bit different from the last time I visited it. Alright, well we're not anywhere close to Wisdom it looks like, or at least it's going to take some time to find it. I think I'd rather go to the Chapel of Lights, since that is available. Burf. Okay. Eating food here is perfectly okay, but uh, be very careful with listening to the service at the chapel. It requires several supplies, and I believe that it mildly increases your cannibalism. Uh, the Chapel of Lights is a strange place. So I have... Very few supplies left. Must be moving on. And we can see the Abbot Horizon is to the northwest, but uh, I can't go there right now because I'm running low on food and I need to start looking at trying to find Aestival or Irum. Irum is quite f off to the east. It's a beautiful sight. One of the prettiest pieces of art in fallen London. Such a wonderful city. Alright, we'll park ourselves at Carlisle's Haven. And let's see here. Once again, I can give them the box for compensation, but uh, I'm more interested in seeing what happened with it. Looks like it was taken to the Isle of Cats, so we will go ahead and deal with that. I can compile a port report. This is one of my favorite port reports. Irem is a place where tenses tend to blend, time is mutable, everything is terrible. I've never actually been to the House of the Amber Sky, but I'm sure it's a good way to reduce terror. Unfortunately, I don't have any coffee, so I can't actually do anything with that. I can buy lamentable relics here for secrets. I can buy sooth and copper long boxes for secrets, which is much more interesting. And I can buy empty mirror catch boxes for secrets, which, ooh, that's actually very tempting. Um, hmm. Considering my current plan is to... That's an interesting call. All right, what else we got? We've got fuel for very expensive, supplies for substantially expensive, and strange catches for sale for 25 bucks, which uh, that is quite a deal because it's one of the only places you can get strange catches. 
without paying for them. I mean, by Z stories, set tales of terror, not too many things of use here. Um, I think I will get one extra supplies just in case. But it looks like that ran me out of money. <laughs> uh, I'm honestly tempted to trade secrets for mirror catch boxes. You can get secrets uh, quite a bit later. It's more a question of like what you can sell them for. You can buy Tales of Parabola them in here for fragments as well, which combine into secrets. But I think that secrets and uh, stat the stats they wield are probably more valuable than the money that I would get from a mirror catch box. So. Hmm, I am trying to establish fairly soon though. In any case, this is this is probably not worth it. Trading in secrets. Hmm. Lamentable. Unlikely to be profitable. And now we have a new destination, the Isle of Cats. Wait, this is Irum. Did I not discover Irum? Let us discover Irum real quick. Shine your light upon it. Behold Irum. Please? Please behold Irum. Alright. Sometimes these areas are fairly hard to uncover. I'm pretty sure that the Irum side is on the left side. Some distance to the northwest, yes. So it's it's actually this thing right here. Let's take a look at that chunk of everything, and there we go. That is Irum. And now we proceed. Keeping our lights on, our terror is fairly high already. We'd like it to not get above 35. It's fairly hard to get uh, ahead in life if we uh, keep that going. And Ace to the to the southeast. That's what we're looking for. dual scene was a bad idea. Ace of all is the prettiest and loveliest of the islands. It's bathed in sunlight, and that makes it one of the most deadly. Sun! A great beam of sunlight dazzles the island. Alright, I can fill a mirror catch box here. It will increase my wounds potentially. Yep, I ended up with one wound, and Three wounds, I die. But I now have a sunlight filled mirror catch box. Compile a port report. And how are we doing on the hold? Oh, exactly 10 spaces. So the most important part gather supplies. And eight supplies. Beautiful. Gathering supplies in Aestival is almost always quite excellent. We can investigate the ruins here. It gives us a memory of distant shores and tells us that we can bring something to Aestival to protect against the sunlight and colonize this area. This is one of the ambitions and ways to end the game. And probably one of the easiest. Some nice little dark areas, always worth exploring for the fragments. <laughs> and once we've explored it, we will turn off our lights because we have no need to fight a giant fish called the Behemoth Stash. Continuing to look, what have we found? Oh goodness, the Savior's Rocks. Ah, I've never seen this this far north before. Uh, this place is filled with spiders. Here's the haunted doctor. A 
stranger to the spiders. Sorrow spiders are quite creepy. You must be careful with them. Oh, these are Veil's challenges along with lights to uh, venture in and get some spider silk, which I guess is a potential trading route. Supplies are quite expensive here, it looks like, so we're going to be moving on. This place does not hold much for us, except for the Determined Doctor, or the Haunted Doctor, which we're quite happy to have. Alright, so we'll just, um, just venture along. So Savior's Rocks are still to the southeast. If I not actually discovered them, they should be right here. There we are. Now that we have discovered them, they won't show up on my map anymore, which is good. <laughs> Sail under the skittering spiders. Uh, Alright, the gant pole is to the south, and with the gant pole is the selenite. Quite happy to go there. Looking at seven supplies, it's probably time to speak to the tireless mechanic. And with a clay man and an empty mirror catch box, we can go to Hunter's Keep and uh, help this man find his sleep. We'll not invite the Canadier to dine until we are well prepared for him. All right. So the creepiest and scariest of all the things are all to the east. But now that we've found the gant pole, we can probably find the selenite. And we've already discovered Sable Port, which means we also be very close to the selenite indeed. Indeed, here we are. Shore leave here is terrible, uh, but a port report and tales for the bone. Ah yes, I can trade hunting trophies here for outlandish artifacts, which is not a particularly great deal, but uh, certainly notable. Shore leave is not an option, we will take the port report and we will leave. In addition to the hunting trophy for the outlandish artifact thing being a fairly bad deal, it's also not particularly helpful to uh, get rid of my something awaits you in port quality. I've just discovered something called Sacha Town, which I assume is just another part of the Chelonade. Okay. So we sail. Looking for evidence of the Empire of Hands. It appears to be to the southeast. These lighthouses are nice since you can uh, use them to reduce your terror a little bit. Still to the southeast. Must be very, very far off. Music in this game is, of course, fantastic. It's a lovely set of compositions. And uh, we're still trying to reduce terror, but not too worried about our fuel, so we'll just hug this wall. We have supplies for days. Life is good on that front. And voila! Stern reminder from the Admiralty. No ship in London is permitted to board a Pentecost 8 without express and prior permission of the Admiralty. Any and all acts of spearfage are prohibited, and they know what they did. Keep a tight grip on your soul, or of stowaways. 
All right. This place is lovely. It's a wonderful place to go about things, apart from the demonic apes that want your souls. But we'll uh, briefly visit. Oh, okay. What's this? It would appear that I've got a rusty locket. Hm. I don't actually remember what the significance of that is. But that's okay, though. We'll take an audience with the flea ridden mare. He can offer to buy my souls. He will also soul. He will also sell me supplies. Neither of those things am I interested in. Uh, the zeppelin here. I am turned away from it, and I don't really need to go to it. All right, there are four scouting trips that I must take. First, to Sovereign Island. Looks like I do not have a gift for the Monkey Emperor, so I must leave it alone. Second, to the Ash Isthmus. The forest here has wild natural paths. I can hunt for supplies, but uh, I'm actually more interested in the hot spring. Losing terror. And uh, I have some wonderful choices here. Mm, I've often thought for the future. I'm curious about the thought for the East and the thought for the Z. I think I'll thought, think for the Z. I travel a lifetime and never see all her secrets. <laughs> Tiny blonde girl perches watching on a rock. She uh, has my clothes, <laughs> and we have started the quest for dignity. <laughs> ah, curse these relaxed limbs. <laughs> it's quite alright to head back and let them stare, it will reduce terror, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and keep chasing the monkey foundling, and uh, we will continue. Please, there it is said. Pretty please, with an imaginary cherry on top if she likes. Uh, it's very, very cold. Oh, goodness. I could actually knock her about with a rock. Oh, I have a sock. Alright, Vale's challenge here of 39%. Uh, successfully managed to avoid a trap. Another Veil's challenge of 40%. Failed that one, however. <laughs> Help the monkey foundling if we can. Let me find a small hut in the middle of the forest. She gives me an outlandish artifact for being such a wonderful sport. But not my clothes. <laughs> and the crew loses 10 terror. <laughs> Alright. Fountainhead Island. Um, a temple in the forest. Uh, looks like there's no reason to go here just yet. But we have it scouted. And finally, Hearth's sake. The Lost Treasure Hunter. <laughs> don't try the meatballs. You just don't want to do that. Um, so this was one of the areas that I got to at the point where I kind of uh, stopped reading these quite as uh, consistently. And occasionally I was, uh, I'd was i gone through a lot of text already, and I did not heed this man's warning. Uh, these people <laughs> are cannibals. But we will return to the boat. With our explorations complete, we can prepare a comprehensive port report, which is an extremely fanciful and wonderful... Wait, what? Okay, all of the robots are in use. Okay, with all of that done, we are now ready to... We've gone to the Empire of Hands. No interest in visiting King Eater's castle right now, which is the furthest thing to the southeast, so we will proceed to the left. 
especially since there's very likely to be a mangrove college near there. Oh goodness, is that the mangrove college right there? That looks like it. Ah, perhaps it is just another island in the Empire of Hands. That's okay, too. Switch. Switch, please. I'm actually trying to switch now. What's going on? Oh, okay. <laughs> Simply forgot the hotkeys. Such as it is. We will proceed. Alright, what we'd like to find amongst these tropical isles is a place called... I believe it's called the Melting Isles? We're looking for the Mangrove College. Fathom's King's Hold is to the west, which, uh... It's fairly unusual to see it that far out, but uh, certainly worth looking at. Melting Isles will probably be somewhere southeast of Khan's Shadow, so... Um, let's see here. I think we'll avoid the Fathom King's Hold for now. It's certainly a trip worth looking at, but I'm trying to find that area where I can collect strategic information. And until I do so, I will not be satisfied. Hey, the Melting Isles to the northwest. That's exactly what I am after. And so we shall proceed. Keep an eye on that. If an exclamation point appears over its head, we turn off our lights and run. Uh, it's fairly close, but not close enough. And there's the Mangrove College. We're leaving our lights on pretty much all the time here, just because we have a lot of fuel to spare, and we're basically just trying to not get terror up too high. It's harder to get rid of terror until I have an elegant townhouse, so... Oh, and it looks like maybe Stodder is here, and can be engaged. I can also pick a passenger, which I will absolutely do. She wants to go to Guider's Morn, which I haven't been there yet, so that's lovely. I can gather supplies here. I can also eat, drink, and be merry, which should reduce my terror. My contact has strategic information, and also give me muter salt. Oh, you lovely, lovely man. My port report gave me supplies. Goodness gracious. Alright, let's see here. I think we want supplies more than we want beachcombing, but... That's a tough one, actually. Eh, this could probably get me some amount of supplies. Sure, we'll try it. Two supplies. Okay, yeah, that was well worth it. You can sometimes get an outlandish artifact by searching the beach, but, uh, yeah. So maybe daughter gives you engine power, and uh, also veils and iron, both of which are fantastic. Um, the fuel efficiency of the Taoist mechanic is quite lovely, but uh, I think in this instance I actually want her in the lead. Um, she needs a strange catch to dine with her. So, we'll think about that. Also increase our veils a bunch. We can buy strange catches back in Irem, so... Uh, that's something that we should consider. I forgot to get one the last time I was there, or rather I think I ran out of money. The Swallowing Isles are to the northwest. And we have a mild terror challenge. We'll spin the sea story, I think. Yep, we have two of them, so I'm fine getting rid of one of them to lose five terror. Okay, so where are we now? Close to Godfall and Polythreme. Eventually gonna move up to Khan's Shadow and Guider's Morn, and then back to Visage, I think. Yeah, let's do it that way. Godfall, Polythreme 
appears that we're rejoining our previous route. And it'll be well worth it to stop pretty much everywhere. Except maybe Nuncio and Pigmont Isle? I should have perhaps attended to those earlier. Like I did not actually uncover the Tides of Appetite, or never really explored it. Lovely, creepy place. Oh, Godfall's over here. I guess the question is, where do I want my, uh... Oh, if I go Godfall, Visage, Isle of Cats, I can swing around back to Demo Island and move... Yeah, let's let's take Polythreme first and then move towards Godfall. And then we'll swing up and around. Our hold has 27 out of 40, including a sunlight filled mirror catch box. It'd be pretty hard to carry Sphinx Stone back to London, but it might be something we can manage if we plan things just right. Uh, so, Clayman, yes. Intelligence, absolutely. Oh, looks like I gained five terror doing that. I should be more careful next time. I've seen very few ships, which is interesting. Typically you will see more. There are often unfinished Corsairs uh, out here. And uh, they're well worth uh, fighting with. We haven't actually gotten into a ship fight yet. Alright, Godfall. Um, I don't have hunting trophies, so I can just get a port report. And uh, without Foxfire Candles, I am stuck, so we will just leave. Um, if there's anything to the south, it might be worth looking at now. Uh, I believe we talked about possibility of the Dran King South. Oh, the other shroom is here. Okay. Uh, this is a good place to trade prisoners, honey, for Blemigans. Uh, the purpose of which mm, somewhat eludes me, but uh, can be kind of a useful way to accumulate some cash. <laughs> we'll go ahead and stop by the other shroom. to be straight south from here, and here we are. So we slide slowly in, and voila. Uh, We'll gather the intelligence for the port report and visit the village. A day of stories, we get a memory of distant shores. Everything is perfect. So with the other shroom discovered, it's kind of worth looking at the southern area soon, but uh, looks like we're okay for the moment. What are you? A Conate War Trimaran. I think I'll leave that well up enough alone. Killing them will get you um, Kaganian suspicion, which is not ideal. Okay, so we'll just move on. Make our way to Visage. Pretty please give me a something awaits you in port, because otherwise there's no reason to stop at Visage. Pretty please? Guess we can explore a little bit around Visage or something like that. Hey, there we go. Alright. Visage. There's our port report, and now we can go ashore. All those who enter must play their parts. 
It's important to check about the significance of the various masks here. Uh, going about without any mask will not do you well. I'm going to take the Locust. It's a good pick for the first time. We'll visit the Library of Parts. And now the most thing that you should do, the thing that you should do here is uh, primarily try to be good at what you do, which as the Locust means stealing things. Being ridiculous. Oh, looks like I have, uh, yeah, okay. And now that all of that is done, I can trade masks with the man who is in charge. And now I am in charge. <laughs> we'll visit the house of the chief geometer and bring him... Oh, a poem concerning snakes. <laughs> uh, the side of the face. Oh. I must wait. Oh, interesting. I can see a visiting line. I don't think I've done this before. All right. Offer to sell him a new undamaged bull. We'll leave a respectful token of offer. And with all of that done, we can enter the hollow of the ear. Bringing a flare with you is interesting. I've never considered doing it. But, uh, we'll fall in line with the others. Continue here. Uh, had I a lamentable relic, I could tell one of my own secrets. But I will merely receive the confidence of a stranger as holy. And I lose some stuff there. I now have a captivating treasure and a secret. It appears that I have resolved that storyline quite well. And lost quite a bit of terror in the process. Visage is a lovely place to visit. I highly recommend it. We are moving on. Okay. To the Isle of Cats! Where the cats are. I've yet to have my personage searched, which is interesting. I also haven't encountered the Blind Bruiser, who is a common uh, encounter in London. Both of those things should have happened by now. Neither of them has. Um, I am certainly not willing to do anything with the Isle of Cats until my suspicion is lowered. I'm not feeling like running smuggling operations and risking getting my stuff kicked in, but I have a 41% chance to sell sunlight here, and even if I lose, I get 500 echoes. Indeed, I did lose. So I lose my mirror catch box, but I get 500 echoes in response, and that is an absolute treasure. We will meet with the King's Claw. I think I will go ahead and accept Isri's offer. Looks like I don't have anything waiting for me in port, so I can't accept a commission anyways. But uh, now we've done that thing. And with that thing done, we can move on. Slowly getting in the hang of things. <laughs> so, we'd like to visit somewhere other than Demo Island as well. Which means peeking off, seeing if we can find something new. If we can't, though, we will certainly stop by the Iron and Misery Funging Co. And then straight to Guider's Born.
The Bonnie Reefs to the northeast. I don't believe that those actually contain any useful islands, but we will take a look anyways. Once again, we make our way to the Iron and Misery Fungin Co. And now we can do things such as take tea with the factor or explore. Gathering supplies is definitely not the right choice. We will explore to the home. Rat Corsairs! Had I a wretched mog, I would be in good shape. If I refuse the trade, it's a 37% chance of success, but I might lose crew. Um, the nice thing is that I'm pretty sure I can hire crew on here for a coin. Interesting question. Three supplies is possibly riskier than losing crew members. I think I'll mu I must refuse the trade. Ah, I've lost one. But one is not all, so I am okay with this particular result. It's a question of what I wanted to lose more. Three supplies or one crew member. And while I was not certain that it would be one crew member, I was quite certain it would be no more than three. Alright, the Bonnie Reefs are mostly only useful for gliding through on the way to Guider's Morn. We'll certainly explore them a little bit. They keep terror low, as long as we keep our lights on. Ah, and we are just jetting our way over towards Guider's Morn. Whew. Getting late in the evening, this will definitely be our last round for the night, but we're certainly likely to make our second trip with great success. Um, once again, it behooves me to raise my veils. How many secrets have I got? Four. Okay. quite like Maybe's daughter, and I'm certainly interested in a romance with her. <laughs> this lowers my terror just a little bit more, and uh, is quite nice. Have I spoken to her? No, I need a strange catch to do so. And that is a little bit harder to come by. But we will go ahead and stop my guider's morn. They sell fuel here for far too much. They sell supplies here for 20, so if you can get them for cheap somewhere else, it's a reasonable idea to do so. They also buy sunlight-filled mirror catch boxes, which is a terrible price. It's not good at all. All right. Dropping off the shady sort, of course, gets us 120 echoes. It's a solid piece of profit for someone we were going to go anyways. Or maybe we weren't. Gathering intelligence is an 86% chance, which we happily succeed at. And now we can explore the more. Ah, the riddles. Um, certainly worth betting an echo on one. Um, might as well go for a low chance. 10 echoes or 1 echo? Uh, I think I'll go with the 10 echo. The 1 echo ones uh, will lose you an echo sometimes, but they won't gain you more than an echo. Whereas the 10 echo one, I believe, will sometimes get you something interesting, which makes it worth it. All right, moving on. Uh, Khan's shadow is on the list. Uh, we should stop at Khan's heart. No, we shouldn't stop at Khan's heart. We should stop at Khan's glory. We only want to stop at Khan's heart if we're going to make another veils check, which admittedly we have a high enough veils that we can do so. And uh, it is a sizable amount of money to survey Khan's heart, so might be worth doing. Tr 
Which first? Which first? I think the straight answer is we want to go... No. We need to go to Khan's Shadow first. And we need to start being a little more careful with our fuel. We're running fairly low, and we don't want to buy any more until we get... Oh... Yeah, pretty much all the way back to home, so... With our terror at 30, and uh, several opportunities to reduce it, I think we're going to be okay on fuel as long as we keep our lights to a minimum. Right on in. Compile that port report. And consider buying things. Uh, the outlandish artifacts are better off to be traded to the uh, person at the Alarming Scholar. Um, I think that I will, however, buy a little bit of fuel. Fire of Claymen, yes, okay. It's definitely not a good idea to buy fuel on bulk here, but just a little bit more to keep me where I'm going seems good enough. We'll spend some 10 extra echoes just to make sure that we don't drown out there. Had I coffee, I could establish a network in this area, which would be lovely. Uh, however, it is not currently to be. How are we doing on strategic information? Do we pick up any extra somewhere? I feel like we might have. Uh, I'm looking for my hold. Port Report of the Isle of Cats, a Whisper Locked Puzzle Box. I have but one strategic information. If that. I don't actually see it at all. There it is. If I can get two, I can be a lot better off. Indeed, I'd really like to increase London's supremacy by at least one so that I can start getting access to spy networks. Those are very relevant. And a good way to continue to gain information when you are a Veils-focused person who wants a lot of wealth. All right, Wandering Khan's heart is, oh, that's actually a thing. Um, how do I feel about that? I think I feel okay about it, let's try it. A stranger in difficulties, we will assist him. Oh my goodness, I got three favors of the Leper's Condescension. That is, oh, that's that's actually extremely good. That would cost me something like 15 coffee, which is 50 uh, echoes a piece in London. It's a little bit cheaper out in the Iron Republic, but um, yeah, that's that's really quite good. And with a 77% chance to gather support report successfully, we will do so. We get one menace. Uh, one menace is manageable, and we get our work. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Leopard's Condescension. Good stuff, good stuff. Let us venture upwards into Khan's heart. And into Khan's glory. I don't think I can quite make the connections I'm looking for this round, but with seven Drowning Pearls, I have a slight chance. Yes, with five Drowning, drowning Pearls, I can get a gift to the Tymon. One favors Tymon's mercy. Cruising past the clan palaces is definitely the wrong idea. Um, but with four favors Tymon's mercy, I could get a little bit of Leopard's Condescension, which is what I need. However, at this point, I might just be willing to bring uh, five... Let's see here. So to petition for the Neprite Quarter, I need two more Leopard's Condescension. So basically what I need is I need another opportunity like the one that I just had. We'll certainly be looking for things like that in the future. I believe that was well worth it. All right, let's just sail straight up out and into Nuncio.
Have we anything to do in Nuncio? It may actually be worth just skipping it. I believe it's only worth about 10. We don't have anything awaiting for us in port, and we don't have Foxfire Candles to explore. Nuncio's probably worth giving a pass. We'll move on to Pigmo Isle. And that'll give us a little bit more leeway on the way home. Hello, what are you? 130, you're a rat barge. I feel like engaging you in combat. Alright, the rules of combat. Get behind them, stay behind them. Don't let them ever get in front of you. If they can't see you in the back, I can't shoot you. Oh. oh, I think they've got a slight shot at me now. Because ships are fairly bad at maneuvering, as long as you can correctly maneuver your ship to stay behind them, you can endlessly fire upon them with your terrible, terrible guns and your terrible, terrible ship without expending all that much fuel, really. Got a little too close. But that's okay, we're done. Fantastic. And we get a cache of curiosities for it, which, uh... Ah, uh, spider silk. Okay. A solid 50 echoes. Nothing particularly spectacular. Uh, that ended us up fairly close to Nuncio, so we're just going to take a stop there. After all. <laughs> Oh, wait, if we do that, we won't actually... No, we can just gather a port report. We won't do anything on the beach. We want to get through the Isle of Cabbies uh, and try to get it a little bit more beefed up. Eh, or we could just continue to do what we're doing. Let's see. Explore along the beach. A parcel that won't stop meowing. Oh, my. This, this didn't work out for me last time. Um, but I think it might be random. We'll try it again. Just five terror. All right, just never do that, basically, is what we've learned. Uh, taking soundings we can do. All right. Postman's Tavern. Trade war stories about our ship work. Talk about the caverns. Still my full tongue. Okay. <laughs> Already got the uniform. Do the shift work. Uh, mirrors. No. All right, we're good to go. Now right now we've got a very specific build that's very heavy on veils, and I think that's going to be pretty good for us, because one of the things that I like to do in Full in London include running, uh, lots of smuggling operations, uh, doing some of the bad things while still keeping largely true to London, basically just being a fairly not stand-up gent. And, uh, so we're definitely going to, you know, try to keep that up. Alright, are we missing anything? Are we forgetting anything? I don't think that we are. Might be worth exploring this aisle down here just to get the uh, port report thing to trigger. Okay, there's a strange catch that- oh shit, I've just engaged a jelly floor in the fog. This is not ideal. This is in fact very bad. We should just leave. Uh, monsters like the jelly floor are certainly okay, but we don't want to engage them in the fog because our lights don't work as well there. And uh, as a result, we will have much slower firing solutions. It's a lot easier to take a lot of damage. Alright, well, we'll help Caviar resolve a dilemma. Um, the options here are Might or Civilization. Uh, this will lower Spirit, which is not good. This will raise Spirit, uh, but may lower Might. I think we have to recommend the Sickbee Quarantine, though. Okay, we've gained one Spirit and one Civilization. Both of those are good things. We can now purchase Syntelac for 115 Echoes, which is still not good. And we'll compile that port report. We'd like to eventually 
have their might up. And we'd like to get that up as fast as possible, because otherwise they will run into trouble with other civilizations. And we're trying to build a booming rat pygmy economy here. The fate of Pygmodile is in our hands, and their delicate claws. Alright, what am I looking at here? That's an interesting little rock. So now, my last stop is a stop that I don't actually know where it is. It's called the Salt Lions. And if I can stop there before I reach London, I would love it. I might... I could potentially divert to Mount Palmerston and simply be on my way, but I'm pretty sure that I can hit the Salt Lions without having to spend extra on fuel. And if I can't, well, we'll just make our way back to Hunter's Keep. We should be fine. What's our current terror? 47? Wow. Still nothing within the Z-Bats range. It's truly a sad day. Alright, nothing so far. We're gonna divert down the round here. The Salt Lions are directly east of London. Okay, Abbey Rock is a long way to the south. Abbey Rock is probably worth visiting. Must be cautious, I can't run out of fuel on the way to London. The terror is 51, so I'm not going to accumulate nightmares. That means I'm not too worried about where my terror is otherwise. Alright, there's Abbey Rock. I think I might even be able to buy a little bit of fuel here. Station 3 to the southwest, that's always useful to know. We'll watch the convent. Oh, we got a strange catch. Fantastic. Um, and compile port report. I have nothing of use here. Uh, with station three to the southwest, we're certainly reasonable. Certainly reasonable to stop there, if we can. Yeah, I think I have to abandon any hopes of getting to the Salt Lions from now on, seeing as I have only two left to work with. Well, we can see that Station 3 is right here, which is probably worth discovering. Yay! Let's go ahead and move on down. Shepherd Isles to the southeast. Lovely. Oh, Restless Nights. Um, for pages, I can inquire about dreams. It's likely to raise terror. I'll do it anyways. I get a couple of fragments out of it. Nothing special. Shepherd Isles might actually sell fuel. Let's train our telescope on shore and get a port report. The gate only works if we have sooth and copper long boxes, which we do not. <laughs> Alright, well, I'd love to stop somewhere else, but uh, unfortunately, we are out of fuel in time. We must return somewhat empty-handed. <laughs> Not that empty-handed, we, though. We have 640 echoes and a sizable amount of things that we can sell for money. So, all in all, I'd say life went pretty well. our lights, and just cruise on in. 
let the lights guide us home. Back into the beauteous fallen London. All right, so we've done extremely well for ourselves. Uh, we're in a, a good enough shape right now, but I would say probably the next thing that we're going to want to do is go up to Vendor Bite and accept a commission to travel around to the various different places of the world and deliver Vendor Bite Tomb Colonists. And that will be probably our next episode. A nice little jaunt around in an effort to get a substantial amount more money. All right. So let's resolve this now. Uh, quite worth doing. Collecting messages from the Harbor Master. We now have someone who wants to sign on. Oh, all of this stuff is very great. I think we will, however, uh, call it a night. Ah, no. Let's let's deliver our stuff first. Trinkets. A hundred echoes for the trinkets. Quite lovely. The Bruiser. If I have 15 points of space in the hole, I can uh, basically get. A decent amount of fuel and supplies. This is a pretty good deal. Um, dealing with the bruiser is a little bit dangerous, but typically profitable. Uh, I've unfortunately gained slightly more menace of suspicion, uh, such as it is. I can visit Cladmon's tattoo parlor, and with moves in the great game, I think I'm rather interested in the gambit this time around. Let's do it. Okay. That reduces our terror by quite a bit. Our terror is now 25. The Alarming Scholar. Um, not the strange catch. The captivating treasure, however, is worth a thousand echoes. And, uh, yes. Completely worth it. Intriguing snippets are what? 50 echoes? Not really that great. Outlandish artifacts are worth 100 echoes here as well as anywhere else, but also give you a Favor Santiquarian. It's fairly important to get the Favor Santiquarian for the Alarming Scholar up because eventually he starts giving you supplies when you get back, which is nice. Merchant Venturer. He wants either some Zoop or some Muter Salt. I have only one Muter Salt, so that's not going to happen. Strategic Information is 150. I think in this case I really want the Vital Intelligence, so I'm going to wait. Uh, what else do you need? The Selenate. Lovely. The Selenate is on our list. Submit our port reports. Demos. Guiders. Palmerston. Godfall. Nuncio. Station 3. Abbey Rock. Pigmoat. Chapel. Khan's Hurt. Buttershrew. Mangrove. Isle of Cats. Poly 3, Visage, Empire of Pants, and oop, we're at our limit. Oopsie daisies. Let's toss one of those overboard and go to London, deliver those clay men, and that'll open up our hold a little bit more. All right. And our new recruit, who do we got? The Genial Magician for 50 Echoes. Absolutely. <laughs> You're welcome aboard my ship, sir. All right, back to the port ports. Aceval, 50. Frostbound, 30. Chelinate, 50. Khan's Shadow, 30. Irum, 20. I think I'm getting slightly more for these on account of the uh, desire for wealth. It seems like I might be getting slightly more money. Port reports. That is all of my port reports, and that is a good place to stop. Uh, we will cover a couple of other things, such as this invitation to the Benthic College, on our next mission out, as we plan for our next adventure. Until then, I will see you next time. This is, I have been Pojo, and this has been a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, may you have good games in the future. I hope you learned some great things about Sun of the Sea. Cheers!